Hi everyone and welcome to another video of BioIVT's ADMI 101 series. My name is Tina Müller and I'm the Scientific Advisor for ADMI Talk Services here at BioIVT and today I will present ADMI 101 Metabolic Stability. So let's start with a quick introduction and refresher of what ADMI is. As you probably know and remember, ADMI stands for Absorption, Distribution, Metabolism and Excretion. So it describes the fate of a drug within the body. And understanding the ADMI characteristics is important in drug development as it helps to predict how a drug will behave once it is in the body. So today we will focus on the M of ADMI, so metabolism, and learn more about how metabolism and metabolic changes can be assessed. And before we start, let me also put metabolic stability into the perspective of the common in vitro drug-drug interaction studies that are performed for small molecules. So overall, DDI studies can be grouped into three categories, drug metabolism, drug metabolizing enzymes, and drug transporters. And as the title of this video implies, Today, we will focus on drug metabolism and specifically on the study listed here at the top, metabolic stability. So what is metabolic stability in the context of in vitro ADMI? In short, the in vitro metabolic clearance of a drug candidate is assessed over time. Now, with that, I would like to mention that according to the ICHM-12, Metabolic stability studies are recommended before starting the clinical phase in patients. And also, in a metabolic stability study, typically several species are evaluated, so not just human, to allow for cross-species comparison. So why are metabolic stability studies so important, and what kind of insights do the data provide? Now, generally speaking, the results of metabolic stability studies can provide valuable insights into the metabolism of a drug candidate. So, for instance, the results can help in the design of other in vitro studies, such as the DDI studies. If conducting metabolic stability studies in different species, the results can help select the preclinical toxicology species. And furthermore, if several drug candidates are evaluated, they can be ranked and the candidate with the most favorable PK properties can be selected. And last, the results might be able to indicate potential challenges later in drug development. So for all these reasons, we normally recommend performing metabolic stability evaluations in several species early in drug development. So now let's dive a little deeper and look at the typical design of a metabolic stability study. So here is a list of the different elements of a study and what you should think about when placing a metabolic stability study. The points in bold are those that are more flexible and I consider most critical to think about and discuss to make sure that the results will meet the needs of a specific drug development program. So first is the species selection. Generally, these studies are conducted in all or selection of the following species. So human, mouse, rat, rabbit, dog, monkey, and mini pig. Which species and how many depends on the program and the drug candidate. Next, the selection of the test system also requires some thought, and I will go over that in the next slide. Now, stability is assessed over time, so the time points need to be determined, which is most commonly the zero time point, and then four time points, typically over 60 to 100 minutes. But of course, these can be adjusted depending on the test system and the specific needs. Now, normally just one drug candidate concentration is tested and that at a low concentration, so for instance, as at uh, one micromolar. Now, depending on the test system, so for example, in liver microsomes, cofactor need to be added. What cofactor is dependent on the type of enzyme class that is evaluated, which in turn is dependent on the structure of the drug candidate. So if the main focus is on zip enzymes, that will be NADPH. 
If a drug candidate is evaluated, that might be a substrate for UGTs. So, for instance, if it contains a phenolic moiety, UDPGA, so UDP glucuronic acid, or even a cofactor mix is more appropriate. Next, it needs to be determined what the endpoint is. Typically, that is drug candidate disappearance, but there are cases where it might make sense to look for metabolite formation or assess both. So drug candidate disappearance as well as metabolite formation. Now, the detection method is LCMSMS, and of course, there are control subs substrates included to confirm that the test system is metabolically active. Now, last, the deliverables are a report or a data summary showing the chosen endpoint, so the disappearance of the drug candidate or the metabolite formation, or both, as well as the determination of the half-life and in vitro intrinsic clearance if the data allows it. Now, in addition to the standard setup, Options are available to fine-tune the assay. So first, inhibitors can be added to compare the stability in the presence or absence of these. One example is 1-ABT or 1-aminobenzotriazole, which is a nonspecific and irreversible inhibitor of CYP450 enzymes. Um, now, CYP and FMO enzymes both use NADPH as a cofactor, and depending on the structure of the drug candidate that is being evaluated, there might be a need to distinguish between the two. So, for instance, when end oxidation could occur. This is most commonly done by heat treatment, which will inactivate FMO, but not CYP enzymes. Alamethacine or CHAPS, two examples of membrane disruptors, can also be included to improve access to the active site when evaluating UGT metabolism. And last, non-standard species such as guinea pig or hamster can be included or substituted if needed. So now, as promised, uh, let's look at the test systems that are used for metabolic stability. The two most common are liver microsomes and hepatocytes. So here on the left, the liver microsomes, these are used primarily to assess phase one metabolism. So in other words, CYP and FMO metabolism. Important here is again, that the cofactor needs to be added, which is typically an ADPH for CYP enzymes and FMO. Now, of course, if UGT is being evaluated at that point, UDPGA can be added instead. Hepatocytes shown here in the middle are the other typical hepatic test system and have the advantage of evaluating phase one and phase two metabolism and no addition of cofactors is required. On the other hand, it's slightly more costly and the drug candidates need to be taken up into the cells. Now, talking about hepatocytes, there is more than one option depending on the drug candidate. So, for instance, for standard small molecules, pooled suspended hepatocytes are most commonly used. Now, for low turnover compounds, cryopreserved plated hepatocytes or hepatopac are good alternatives that will typically result in better data. Now, in addition, if biliary efflux is a major route of hepatic disposition, transporter certified cells might be a good option. And then in addition to these test systems, there are other systems listed here on the right. So for instance, liver S9 fraction or liver cytosol evaluate um, different cell compartments. And of course, extrahepatic test systems such as extrahepatic subcellular fractions, like for instance, kidney microsomes, and then also plasma or tissue homogenates. So now let's take a closer look at what the deliverables are. On the left, you can see typical graphs of a metabolic stability showing the drug candidate disappearance over time in the different species. And here, rat, dog, monkey, and human were evaluated. The data is then used to calculate the half-life and in vitro intrinsic clearance, which is shown on the table on the right. Now, let me take a quick side tour and introduce one of the alternative test systems for low turnover drug candidates, 
because metabolic stability for these compounds has often been challenging to be evaluated. And that test system is the hepatopac test system. So hepatopac cultures are long-term, stable, and reproducible test systems for low turnover drug candidates. So the results are more predictive than when typical incubations in suspension hepatocytes are used. So in other words, if a compound does not show disappearance after two to four hours incubation in hepatocytes, hepatopac is a real great alternative to assess metabolic stabilities for these compounds. So what is so special? Now, hepatopac is a co-culture with primary hepatocytes and stromal cells. And you can see the design of these cultures here on the left. The setup is normally done in a 24 or 96 well plate. And what you can see here in the scheme, as well as in the microscope picture, is that each well has so-called islands of hepatocytes that are surrounded by the stromal cells. And these stromal cells, they stabilize the hepatocytes for several days, allowing the study to progress for up to 168 hours. Now here on the right, we have the study design and hepatopac cultures are available for five different species, species, human, mouse, rat, dog, and monkey. Depending on the species, pooled or single donors are offered. So for human, pooled and single is available. For mouse and rat, pooled is offered and monkey and dog are typically um, offered as single donors. Now, the time points are stretched out over typically 168 hours, which is seven days and can be adjusted as needed. Now, other than that, the setup mirrors that of the typical metabolic stability studies. So the same endpoints, um, the compounds are being measured by LCMS, MS, and the delivery of half-life and intrinsic clearance, if that is possible. And here you can see a typical graph and table from one of these experiments. You can see compound A, the drug candidate in blue, and you can see its disappearance over 168 hours while um, acellular and stromal controls serve as negative controls. And with that, let me summarize some key takeaways from metabolic stability studies. So first, the main results of these studies are the determination of the half-life and in vitro clearance of a drug candidate. With that in hand, results can aid in the selection of a toxicology species, as well as in the design of other preclinical studies. Now, if more than one compound was tested, the compounds can be ranked in terms of their intrinsic clearance. And with all that, metabolic stability is often assessed early in drug development as it is essential to make decisions and hopefully move through the R&D process quickly and efficiently. Now, with that said, reaction phenotyping and metabolite profiling studies will round out the insights for the in vitro metabolite metabolism characterization of a drug candidate. So with that, we are at the end of the short introduction into metabolic stability studies. And here are some additional resources that can be found on the BioIBT website. Thank you very much for watching and please reach out if you have any questions or of course, if you have any needs for metabolic stability or any other in vitro study. Thank you again and bye.